Hey guys, I'm Amy Rose Eisenbach with AMC Movie News, and this is AMC Movie Talk. Starting the show off today with filling you in on the latest updates in film news. The hit animated film Wreck-It Ralph is still playing in AMC theaters. Go on over to amctheaters.com to grab your tickets. It seems that plans are already being made for a sequel to the film. Both John C. Riley and Sarah Silverman said in recent interviews that they expect a sequel will happen, and now director Rich Moore is claiming he's already forming plans for Mario to appear in the next film. Joining me today is senior editor John Campia. Hey, hey. How you doing? Good, thank you. Great. So with uh, sequel news for Wreck-It Ralph, what do you think about that? Well, I, first of all, there, there can be no surprise mm -hmm. that Wreck-It Ralph is going to get a sequel. It's, it's not making dump trucks full of money for Disney, mm -hmm. but it's clearly successful and people are loving it. Loving it. And, and quite often when you get a film, even if a movie doesn't make huge amounts of money, if the audiences are loving it and the critics are loving it, then you know you can make money with mm -hmm. a sequel as well. So it's not surprising at all that they're doing a sequel. Um, I love the fact that they're doing a sequel. I love Wreck-It Ralph. Look, all due respect to films like Frankenweenie and, and Paranorman mm -hmm. and The Rabbi's Cat. and so All due respect to some very good animated films this year. Nothing comes close to Wreck-It Ralph. For overall pure entertainment value, not only was it really funny, it was touching and endearing and had everything that you really needed for a film like that. It, it, it was just a complete hit. It hit it out of the park Agreed. on every level. Now. You have a lot of these video game characters and very conspicuous by his absence was Mario, mm -hmm. obviously. Now, I initially thought it was, May, maybe they couldn't get the rights to Mario. But according to the uh, director, Rich Moore, he said, no, it's just that Mario is such an important character and we didn't have anything really significant for him to do. Okay. We didn't want to have Mario just standing around in the background. We wanted something significant. But as you mentioned, Moore is now saying they've got something for him to do in the sequel and they are planning to using him. And I think this is terrific news. Great. Agreed. All right. So the new Superman movie, Man of Steel, is just over six months away, but more images from the film have been appearing online recently. One of the most notable ones is the image from the cover of the French film magazine Studio Cine Live, giving us one of the best looks at Henry Cavill in the iconic costume. So John, did you like the image of that? and the other images being released later? I'm loving the images we're seeing. Now, there are some, obviously, you look at the image, and I'm sure Dennis is gonna pull up the, the picture here. You see, this Superman costume has kind of like a that mesh uh, egg crate kind of mm -hmm. fabric. But to me, that just makes sense. And it just looks a lot better. It's it's a fabric that moves and breathes and shapes itself to the body, as opposed to the Christopher, look, I'll do, I love the Christopher <laughs> Reeve movies as much as anybody. But if they were doing a movie, a Superman movie today, wearing that same mm, outfit, not gonna fly. <laughs> that would be a joke. No pun intended. That would fly. <laughs> that would be a complete joke. It would look absolutely ridiculous. I think this. I think the outfit looks great. I'm still very excited about Henry Cavill being yeah. cast. I think he's going to be a remarkable Superman. I love the teaser trailers that we've seen mm -hmm. to Superman. I love just about everything. Everything we've seen coming out of it. There's nothing that makes me nervous about this film at this point. We're still six months away, but these uh, six months cannot pass fast enough for me. I think it looks <laughs> terrific. So, yeah, count me in for Superman. Great. So the very first poster for the upcoming Tom Cruise film Oblivion was released online today with the tagline, Earth is a memory worth fighting for. The cast of the sci-fi action film includes Tom Cruise starring with Olga Kirilenko, Andrea Riseborough, and Melissa Leo. The film is described like this. Jack Harper, played by Cruz, is one of the last few drone repairmen stationed on Earth, part of a massive operation to extract vital resources after decades of war with a terrifying threat known as the Scavs. Jack's mission is nearly complete. Living in and patrolling the breathtaking skies from thousands of feet above, his soaring existence is brought crashing down when he rescues a beautiful stranger from a downed spacecraft. Her arrival triggers a chain of events that forces him to question everything he knows and puts the fate of humanity in his hands. <laughs> Are you looking forward to this, John? I am absolutely looking forward to Oblivion and for three reasons. Here's the three reasons I'm looking forward to Oblivion and why you should too. <laughs> Number one, it's a sci-fi action film. Mm -hmm. I am a sucker for sci-fi action films. I'll see all of them. I won't necessarily, <laughs> it doesn't mean I love them, yeah. but even if I know a sci-fi action film is going to be horrible, like, uh, what was that Justin Timberlake one 
recently. In time. In time. It was pretty bad. Knew that was going to be <laughs> awful. Knew that was going to be trash. But you still had to see it. But it's a sci-fi film, so I'm, I got to be there. So for Oblivion, I'm, I got to be there. Number two, I've said this for a long time. Tom Cruise, uh, maybe he's a bit crazy. Maybe he's a bit baddie. Uh, maybe he's not all there. But he's a very, very talented, Great gifted actor. actor. He's incredibly gifted, and he brings a lot to his roles. And, you know, if, if you had any doubt, just watch the last Mission Impossible mm -hmm. film. I think Jack Reacher is going to be really good. So I'm really looking forward to seeing... I mean, the last time we saw Tom Cruise in a uh, sci-fi film was... Um, Minority Report. Oh, yes. Minority Report. Thank that you. Was awesome. The Steven Spielberg one. Yeah. Minority Report. And that was great. I so this that. is great. But here's the third reason I'm really looking forward to Oblivion. The screenplay is done by a guy named Michael Arndt, mm -hmm. who won the Academy Award for Best Screenplay for Little Miss Sunshine. But more importantly, bum, 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 bum. he is the screenwriter for the new Star Wars film, Star Wars Episode Seven. And so I am dying to see mm -hmm. this sci-fi action film written by this guy to hopefully give me lots of enthusiasm yeah. for the next Star Wars. So yeah, I think the poster looks great. You were mentioning to me earlier that the the uh, concept art that yeah. we've seen floating around online looks really it's sharp. Beautiful. I'm down. S sign me, <laughs> just like, I'm very positive today. You sign are. me up for Oblivion, I'm <laughs> good, down. Good day. All right, so director Kevin Smith, a cult fan favorite and consistently one of the most popular attractions at Comic-Con, took to his Twitter account to announce that he is planning on making his final feature film, Clerk 3. Apparently, the one element holding things up is the actor, Jeff Anderson, who plays Randall, hasn't signed on yet, but Smith sounds very confident that this will happen soon. So what do you think about a third Clerks film? Um, I liked the first Clerks. Um, it's a classic. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves it. But I am one of those guys who I actually preferred. I know this sounds sacrilegious. I preferred Clerks 2. Hmm. I thought Clerks 2 was a brilliant film because not only was it funny, it, I mean, it had all the Kevin Smith raunchiness and everything too, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it was really smart and it dealt with bigger questions that, uh, that guys, you know, my age face and struggle with, you know, regarding friendship and, you know, direction your life goes and stuff. I thought it was an incredibly smart film because mm -hmm. it wove those two raunch, really great raunchy comedy that Smith does so well with larger you know, very relatable issues mm -hmm. that I thought were handled in a really nice, touching, beautiful way while still getting back to the raunchy comedy. So I thought it was brilliant. I've always wanted to go back and visit those guys again. Uh, Dante and Randall, th their, so their comedic chemistry together is fabulous. Now, so one of the, so on the one issue, Clerks 3, damn right. I'm really excited because he said they would never do another Clerks mm -hmm. film. So I'm really happy that he's saying this. Uh, now, they said the guy who plays Randall, of course, hasn't signed up for it yet. He was the last guy they got to sign up for Clerks 2. Mm. Clerks 2 almost didn't happen because he didn't want to come back. He loves the characters, yeah. but he's afraid of making himself look silly. That's what he said in the mm. uh, in the DVD on Clerks 2. So it sounds like they're having the same issues again, but I think they'll get him on board and they'll probably do it. But the second issue that comes up in here is that Kevin Smith is saying this is his last feature film. Dennis, I, you and I had a discussion about this a little a little earlier Share with everybody the thoughts you were giving me about Kevin Smith saying this is his last feature film. It's not his last movie. <laughs> please, please. I mean, directors say that. Rappers say it. They all say like. I this instantly is thought of Jay Z saying, "Yeah, this is my last album before my next album in three years." I instantly yeah. thought of Michael Bay saying, "I'm not directing Transformers 4." <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like exactly. So I, I I personally don't think it's his last movie. I know Tarantino says he's a f he has a few movies left and then he's done. Ha. I guarantee within the next 15, 20 years, Tarantino and Kevin Smith will have another movie besides the last one that yeah. they supposedly had. It keeps their fans like at the edge of their seat. <laughs> See, I, and, and I am I am totally with you in general about that, but I don't know if it applies to Kevin Smith. I've gotten the feeling from Kevin Smith for a long time that he's kind of done with over directing, it. that he's kind of over it. Um, and, and, you know, we saw that with that little horror film he did recently, Red State, mm -hmm. that he, you know, got some real negative feedback on that, and he reacted very badly to it. Oh. Um, and I think we... I actually could believe it that he's like, I've had enough and is willing to walk away from it. But I won't be surprised if in 2019 mm -hmm. we hear of Clerks 4 or, uh, you know, Chasing Amy 2. 
<laughs> I know he does that Hollywood Babylon thing with Ralph Garman from K Rock. Right, right. That's like his baby. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right. All right. So actor James Marsden and Elizabeth Banks have signed on to star in the upcoming comedy Walk of Shame to be produced by Lakeshore Entertainment. Walk of Shame follows a high strung news anchor who, after a wild night out, finds herself locked out on the street with no phone, money, ID, or car and embarks on a series of misadventures as she finds her way to the most important job interview of her life. Now, do you like the sound of this one, John? Oddly enough, I do. I do too. And you know what? I, I'm, I'm not your typical guy movie fan. I, I actually, I can get into romantic comedies. Mm -hmm. I, I really can. And this sounds like a good one for a couple of really important reasons. Number one, I think the premise does sound like it could be cute. Yeah. Uh, number two, any girl for about the past five years, six years, seven years, any woman that I've become involved with has to sign an acknowledgement contract at the beginning of our relationship that if I have the opportunity <laughs> to hook up with Elizabeth Banks, you have to just be fine with it <laughs> and you just have to be okay with it. She's a cutie. Um, she is awesome. And, and I'm not just talking, oh, she's so hot. I mean, she is so adorable. She's so likable. She is a infinitely likable she and she's great on screen yeah. she's really great on screen and so i'm really looking forward to her being it but also i think james marsden is one of these actors that does not get the credit he deserves and it's kind of funny um both of them have had roles in uh, continuing ongoing roles in 30 rock and i think they've both been great in 30 rock but marsden you really think about it he was so good in Enchanted. Um, he was so good in Hairspray. He was the one redeemable thing about that um, Heigl comedy, 27 Dresses. Oh, God. And, of course, everybody thinks, look, whether you like the way they use the character or not, he was a great Cyclops in the X-Men films. They may not have used Cyclops yeah, they well. they didn't use them well. They, didn't, they may not have done the right things with him, but he was a great choice to play Cyclops. I, I just think he's so underrated. So seeing these two people together yeah. in a romantic comedy... By Lakeshore, and I actually, I really quite like Lakeshore Entertainment. Yeah. Um, I think uh, I think this could be a winner. Hey, listen, folks, that will do it for us. Thanks for joining us here on AMC Movie Talk. But I want to remind you right now, before we sign off here, take a moment and click subscribe. Subscribe to our AMC Theaters YouTube channel. Stay up to date on everything going on in the world of movie news, our editorials, trailer reviews, and, of course, your everyday AMC Movie Talk show. So stop what you're doing. Click subscribe. Just click it, guys. It's totally free. <laughs> and hey, listen, while you're at it, don't forget to follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash AMC Theaters. Become one of our followers on Twitter at twitter.com slash AMC Theaters. And come back again every day to visit us Monday through Friday for AMC Movie Talk. That'll do it for us. My name's John Campion. Until next time, bye bye.